Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the Online Series 2 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out a team with Zoroark. This team actually reached the top 10 in the ranked ladder recently, and Zoroark obviously is a really intriguing Pokemon that's seen very little play in VGC. The general idea behind it is that you can use it and its ability Illusion to disguise Zoroark as something that's not as threatening, and it turns Zoroark into a really interesting offensive lead option. This set has Sucker Punch, Low Kick, Knock Off, and Protect, and so the idea is that you can just deal quick amounts of damage with it when your opponents are least expecting it. And so, yeah, I think it's a really interesting concept, and I'm excited to try it out because it's a Pokemon I have very little experience using, but it was one of my favorite Pokemon to use in Sword and Shield, actually. And it's just a Pokemon that historically has not really seen much play at a high level in VGC. So as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thank you so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, would really appreciate if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel, really helps out a ton. Anyway, thanks as always for joining me and let's get started. First of all, a huge thank you to A Chang VGC for building and sharing this team. They actually reached top 10 in the online ladder with this exact team, which I think is absolutely amazing. I linked their Twitter down in the description below, as well as a rental and a paste if you want to try out the team yourself. And question of the day, inspired by us using Zoroark, I want to know what your favorite Gen 5 Pokemon is down in the comment section below. So we have to start with this team with, of course, the Zoroark. Now, the main reason that you'd want to use this Pokemon is because of Illusion. It's a really interesting ability in which Zoroark basically disguises itself as the last Pokemon in the party until it takes direct damage. What does that actually mean? So, for example, if you lead Zoroark, whatever Pokemon you select as your fourth and final Pokemon is going to be the one that you kind of transform into, right? And so the idea is that you can often transform into something that your opponents will think is a little bit more passive, especially Garganacle, for example, and then your opponent's feeling kind of safe on turn one of the battle, and then you can just kind of catch them off guard with, like, a knockoff plus really any strong attack from any of these Pokemon, especially, like, a Thunderbolt or Earth Power from Sandy Shocks, and just kind of get a knockout onto them before they're e able to even move. And so part of the strength of Zorak is actually kind of disguising itself as something that doesn't seem to pose as much of an immediate threat, whether it be Mimikyu or Garganacle. I know that A. Cheng mentioned Mimikyu and Garganacle are kind of the two most common Pokemon that he's uh, transformed into, but I actually have, I feel like, had games where I've just trans like used all of the Pokemon as the fourth slot. So it's obviously dependent on your opponent's team, but that's one of the key things in uh, using this Pokemon, right? Trying to figure out what your fourth Pokemon should be as to uh, what to transform into. But the general idea is that you're really fast, you have a lot of good attack as well, and so you can just deal quick damage with Sucker Punch. For example, Sucker Punch plus Thunderbolt from the Zorark Sandy Shocks combo can just knock out Fluttermane, which is really nice. You also have Knock Off, which is just a really powerful attack, especially with same type attack bonus, and Low Kick for coverage, especially into things like Steel-type Pokemon, like King Gambit, for example. And so, the Zorark synergizes, in my opinion, really nicely with Sandy Shocks and Mimikyu as leads, uh, because, like, you just put on a lot of offensive pressure immediately, and, like... This team doesn't really have speed control, but the Sandy Shocks has the booster energy, right? And so it will be really fast in itself. And the Mimikyu is disguised here, and so it's kind of hard to like knock out both Mimikyu and Zoroark or Sandy Shocks and Zoroark quickly um, because of yeah, both the speed boost and the uh, disguise here. And so Sandy Shocks here is a Grass Terra with Terra Blast. Otherwise, it's Thunderbolt Earth Power with boost energy, pretty standard. Grass Terra is valuable for a bunch of different reasons. One, it helps kind of ignore Amoongus and Brute Bonnet, Spore and Rage Powder. Two, it's really valuable in defensively, right, protecting you against, like, ground-type attacks and ground-type Pokemon. And three, Gastron's actually a huge pain to deal with otherwise, but with the Grass Terra and Terra Blast, you threaten Gastron with the one-hit knockout. So, Zorark, Sandy Shocks, really strong lead duel for this team. Mimikyu and Zorark is the other lead duel that I was talking about earlier. This Mimikyu is just kind of the standard Life Orb offensive set, but you actually have Curse. Now, Curse historically has not really seen that much play in VGC on Ghost-type Pokemon. It's been used on non-Ghost-type Pokemon like Snorlax to boost its stats, but uh, Curse is valuable in a format where Dondozo exists because essentially with Curse, you can out-damage Dondozo even if it has leftovers each turn and Dondozo will then eventually faint, right? And so in a format where Dondozo exists, this move makes a lot of sense. And I've had situations where Mimikyu is just about to faint, not really going to get much more value out of the other attack, so might as well just, you know, use Curse right before I actually end up fainting. To round out the team, you've got Citrus Berry, Fire Terra, Scizor. Scizor is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, and I think has a little bit more room to operate here in Series 2. General idea is that Bullet Punch is really strong into Flutter Main, and you have Faint, which is really nice because you can go for, like, Faint plus Thunderbolt into opposing Iron Bundles without Protect, or sorry, with Focus Sash without Booster Energy. And with Faint plus Thunderbolt, you can just outspeed it and KO it, and Faint also breaks through Protect and breaks through a Focus Sash. Close Combat, once again, kind of valuable into Steel-type Pokemon, like uh, King 
Dragon Gambit, for example. To round out the team, you've got Garganacle with Leftovers. This is a really standard Garganacle set. The one thing to note is that it's Ghost Terra rather than Poison Terra. Poison Terra, of course, was popular towards the end of Series 1 when Shisaku Lee won San Diego Regionals with it, but the reality is that there are more ground-type attacks and Pokemon in this format, like Sandy Shocks and the Great Tusk, and so Ghost Terra makes more sense. Max Calibur as the final Pokemon, pretty standard offensive set, really bulky, max attack, and the idea is to just get good damage across the board, and Fire Terra helps defensively against Steel-type attacks, like Golden Ghost Make It Rain. And so, I'd say for this team, a lot of the times I like leading Zorark, because I think Zorark is just so powerful and can really catch your opponents off guard, but but you don't have to commit to it, right? I, I think really, like, I haven't found any super, like, set modes that you can play with. There's so much flexibility with this team. It's really just judging off how you're going to actually not knock out your opponent. And a lot of it, the times, it's just through super effective damage. Uh, late game Garganacle is also a strong win condition for this team. So keep that in mind. But yeah, that's uh, it for the team. Let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. So in terms of weaknesses, the first thing that I want to highlight is if you're fighting against Zoroark, I think playing a little bit passively early can be beneficial, especially since this team doesn't really have a way to like boost the stats of other Pokemon. If you just double protect in front of the lead on turn 1, for example, Zoroark often will just reveal itself because it'll use Sucker Punch, Low Kick, or Knock Off, and you, then going into turn 2, you'll be like, okay, it's not actually the Pokemon it's disguising us, it is just Zoroark. And so I've had... A fair amount of wins, I feel like, where my opponents just basically don't really respect the possibility of a Pokemon being Zoroark on turn 1, and I'm able to just catch them off guard and pick up a quick knockout immediately to start the battle, and in some of the losses I've had, my opponents will just double protect or play passively, I end up, like, revealing Sucker Punch plus the combo that I'm trying to go for, and then in turn 2, it creates this mind game as to whether or not I should do the same thing now that they know Zoroark is on the field, right? And so, playing passively can help a little bit. One other thing to note with this team is that you have a lot of priority, Shadow Sneak, Bullet Punch, Sucker punch ice shard so naturally waste a block priority like psychic terrain or something like serena or Furgraph's abilities can be pretty valuable and can be a little bit more annoying for this team to go up against one other thing to keep in mind is kind of taking advantage of the lack of certain like immunities or res resistances and so for example, nothing on this team actually resists ground type attacks and so just really powerful ground type attacks can be pretty scary and you know, even with the Terras here, for example, the only defensive Terra you have against ground is Sandy Shocks and Grass Terra, but that means everything else is kind of left exposed, which can be scary. Uh, this team also indexes a little bit heavier on the physical end, right? So Mimikyu, Scizor, Zorark, and Baxcalibur. So I had a game, this one was an interesting one, where I was up against like an Obama Snow and a Iron Bundle, and with the Snow up, like, I just found that I couldn't actually deal that much damage with my physical Pokemon, especially because I led like Zorark and Mimikyu. I, like in that matchup, I probably needed to go like Scizor and Sandy Shocks, for example. But point being is that because there are so many physical Pokemon, things like Intimidate, Reflect, Will-O-Wisp uh, can be a little bit more annoying since your only real special attacker, of course, is the Sandy Shocks. Finally, I think one of the things I struggled against was just hard Trick Room teams because I couldn't find a great way to just absolutely deny Trick Room, right? If you just have like Psychic Seed, NED plus a Trick Room user, um, it was... I found it difficult to actually deny Trick Room, yeah, because like, yeah, Zora can knock off, but once Psychic Seed is consumed, knock off is obviously dealing less damage, and if you're not picking up a knockout onto the NDD, then whatever's next to NDD will very likely be able to set up Trick Room, especially since this team doesn't really have spread moves, and so hard Trick Room is something that I definitely struggled a little bit against when trying out this team. So yeah, those are just a couple things that I've noted. Let's get into the battles. Okay, we've got Sandy Shocks plus Espathra, Brute Bonnet. Golden Go, Dragonite, and the Garganacle. So, I think we can really take advantage of priority here. For example, lead Zorark plus Mimikyu, and just double up onto a Spathra immediately. I think that's pretty cool. What do I want in the back? Scizora's Bullet Punch Close Combat Faint. Not that great in this matchup. I think I really like my own Sandy Shocks, especially because of the booster energy, but Earth Power, Thunderbolt, good coverage. Uh, one thing to think about is beating their Garganacle. Don't really want to play the Garganacle War. I think I could just go with Baxcalibur. Yeah, I like Baxcalibur a little bit more over Scizor. This is a really interesting matchup, so I'm excited to play it out, but I think Zora can be super strong for us here. Especially if they go, like, Espathra plus the Sandy Shocks and just go for, like, Gravity plus Hypnosis on turn 1, I can really get a huge lead immediately with a potential double up onto the Espathra. Let's see. 
Okay, Golden Go Dragonite, that's fine with me. Right now we are disguised, and so they're probably not very scared of... Like, Dragonite should be pretty scared of Baxcalibur, right? But we know it's actually Zoroark, so I'm happy to click knockoff here. I guess I want to double up onto Golden Go, ideally. Would love to just KO it. Alright, let's go for it. Nice. Okay, so here's Shadow Sneak. That in itself did so much damage. And there's the Zorark to get knockoff, and Golden Go is now eliminated. I don't know if I needed to double up onto that slot, like, but I wanted to cover for it being super defensive and also... Oh, yeah! A potential Focus Sash. I wasn't really covering for that in particular, but uh, I was thinking more of, like, if it potentially Terra's there. Although, if it Terra'd, it probably would have survived um, the turn. But, yeah. Just wanted to maximize my damage output into that slot. Golden Go being eliminated this early on is a really big deal. That Rock Slide also did a ton to Zorark. It honestly felt like Choice Band damage to me, but I'm not 100% sure. Either way, though, this is exactly what Zorark can do for you. Get a huge surprise knockout, essentially, immediately. Garganacle comes out. I'm willing to protect here and play rough into Dragonite. I think for my opponents, and it makes sense to protect with Garganacle and just click Rock Slide again. So if I protect with Zorark, then I can get a knockoff onto the Garganacle, and removing leftovers is really handy. They're probably going to want to Terra that, I would think. Zorark goes for Protect. Yep, Garganacle protects. Great. There's Rock Slide again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Choice Banded. Some Mimikyu. No flinch, beautiful. Great damage from play rough. Cool. Given that, I could actually Shadow Sneak and Sucker Punch here. I wonder if Sucker Punch just gets the knockout in itself. If I Dark Terror, I probably do. It's probably worth conserving my Terra, Grass Terra, though, for Garganacle potentially. I just think it would be kind of cool to Sucker Punch here and then Curse. But let's go for Sucker Punch and Shadow Sneak here. KO Dragonite. Oh, nice switch. Okay, that's a really good play. Well, good thing I didn't commit my Dark Terror like that <laughs> onto Zoroark. Brute Bonnet comes out. It's fine. Okay, nice play. Uh, but I think now Grass, Terra, Sandy Shocks is pretty well positioned. And obviously Baxcalibur with Ice Shard and Ice Skull Spear is also looking quite good. Cool. Let me cue Faints. I think I'm happy to just go out into Baxcalibur, but I don't know. It's pretty interesting to go into Sandy Shocks here. Let's go to Bax. I think the main thing with Baxcalibur coming out right now is, do they Terra Brute Bonnet instead? Because I think I'm actually going to protect with the, um... Protect with the Baxcalibur. I actually don't mind a low kick into Brute Bonnet and then a protect here. Because low kick then does enough damage where I can definitely KO you even if you're like... Uh, Citrus Berry or defensively Terra. Because I can Glaive Rush instead. I think the main thing I want to be careful about here is the Garganacle protecting and then Brute Bonnet terroring and then go for a Spore onto the Baxcalibur. Yep, there's the Terror from Brute Bonnet. And it's going to be Fire. Okay, works for me. This now means Sandy Shocks has a very powerful Earth Power into both Pokemon. And that was kind of the whole point of protecting here. Okay... Low kick actually did so little there. That's probably a, a knockoff is just better then. I, I forgot how light brute bond it was. And they double up onto that slot. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I can now go for knockoff as well as glaive rush. Okay. 
Yeah, that knockoff does so much. It's Roselli Berry. That's interesting. Okay, we should get the knockout with that. Beautiful. Uh, I can just Ice Shard to finish off the Dragonite now, and then it would be a 2v1 against the Garganackle. Yeah, they're going to Salt Cure me, but that's fine. Uh, I guess I do have to respect Extreme Speed here, right? Hmm. Question is, who did they Extreme Speed into? Because Choice Man Extreme Speed is looking kind of scary right now, actually. Yeah, the turn Dragonite switched out was a nice turn by my opponent. I think I had the opportunity to potentially get Curse off. Uh, I'm happy to just trade here with Dragonite, honestly. Like, even if I lose both Pokemon here, I think Sandy Shock should win the 1v1 against Garganackle. Like, because they can't Terra, right? So you can recover and you do have leftovers, but I think we should out-damage Garganackle. Okay, Garganackle actually protects here as well. Cool. And they actually extreme speed into the Baxcalibur. So that should secure the game up for me, I think. Because knockoff will KO Dragonite. It'll reveal Choice Band. And then now I just bring out Sandy Shocks. And I can just go for knockoff plus Earth Power. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think the main thing here is I didn't really get to use Curse with Mimikyu, which I was really intrigued by. But I like the idea of potentially just like KOing Dragonite should they have stayed in there. And they made a good play. I think the one other thing I could have done was potentially knock off into Brute Bonnet. I'm not sure if that would have done more if Brute Bonnet didn't Terra there, though. So, I'm happy to just knock off now and Earth Power. Probably was a little more optimal to Terra this turn, but yeah. I, I'm curious if we can just straight up get the knockout with this double up right now. Because Garganackle is not going to be able to knock out us in return, and then getting rid of leftovers means that it can't heal up as well. I would think Earth Power is a two-hit knockout. Yeah, definitely is. Cool. Alright, there's knockoff. Garganak actually hangs on, but one more attack will finish it up. And there's Salt Cure into the Sandy Shocks. Zorark was amazing for us throughout this whole game, though, right? Like, it applied a lot of offensive pressure. Knockoff was so valuable. We got rid of... Do we get rid of every Pokemon's item, actually? It's not wild. Uh, low kick and earth power, sure. They can't tear, obviously, so nothing to really worry about here. But yeah, we got rid of Golden Go's item. We got rid of Dragonite's item. We got rid of Brute Bonnet's item. And yeah, we got rid of Gargan Ankle's item. So I got four knockoffs into four different Pokemon in this game. And that's the thing with Zoroark. Like, the way it was described to me by the original team creator is that it's kind of like a fake Meowskarada. And it's with the, you know, kind of illusion your opponents don't expect, like, this amount of physical burst damage or, like, losing their item, for example. So, yeah. That game highlighted just how dangerous Zora can be, and I think, like, using it to make my opponent think it was the Baxcalibur made things interesting as well, because they probably wanted to hyper-focus on KOing Baxcalibur, thought, like, Rock Slide into Make It Rain was super safe there, but instead we're faster, we have the priority Shadow Sneak to get rid of the Golden Ghost Focus Sash, and then just finish it off with a knockoff. And so, that turn one would have played out very differently if we had Baxcalibur actually in the field rather than the Zora arc. Okay, Furograph, King Gambit, Golden Goal, Mimikyu, Iron Hands, and Bundle. I struggled a little bit against Trick Room oriented teams, uh, but this one's not like solely Trick Room. I could lead Mimikyu, like if I wanted to KO Furograph, what would be my best bet? It'd be like a knockoff from Zorark disguised with something. Zorark also has low kick for King Gambit here, which I think can be really good. I'm thinking Zorark plus Mimikyu. Uh, I do think I want Scizor here because of close combat into King Gambit as well. Excalibur doesn't feel that good here. I think we dropped that. It's between Garganackle, which has Wide Guard, which I don't think is super useful here. Other than against Golden Go, and then Sandy Shocks. I think the thing is, like, my opponent's team feels fairly offensive, especially if Trick Room goes up. I'm not sure, like, I love Garganackle, because it just doesn't, do, like, pressure my opponent enough in return. So I'm going to go with the Sandy Shocks here instead, because it has super effective Earth Powers into three of my opponent's Pokemon, as well as a super effective Thunderbolt into the Iron Bundle. 
But yeah, I think like the goal here is to try to use Zorak ideally to get a quick knockout onto Fergraf. But if they lead Iron Hands plus King Gambit, things will get interesting. One thing I actually thought about, by the way, was bringing Mimikyu in the back so that Zorak could potentially disguise it into Mimikyu. And then with that, my opponent would not click fake out onto the Zorark slot. Because the thing is, even though Zorark's transforming into something else here, I'm leading Mimikyu, so it's not going to transform into Mimikyu. And so my opponent can just click fake out onto, you know, whatever it transforms into. But they go with Iron Bundle and the Iron Hands. Okay, uh, I'm okay with that. I am down to click Protect here. Protect. Part of me kind of wants just to play rough into Iron Hands here. I'm down for that. The Sandy Shocks right now is applying pressure into Bundle. Yep. Fake out goes into the Protect. Perfect. And they click Icy Win. That's fine. This makes me think they're not going the Trick Room route, which I'm honestly pretty happy to see. I think Trick Room is fairly concerning. Life Orb play rough and Iron Hand should do sizable damage. I don't expect to get a knockout though, but let's see. Oh man, that's really good damage. Okay, nice. I'll take that. Um, Shadow Sneak will finish it off now. I can just knock off into Bundle and sneak into Iron Hands. Then I could look towards doubling up onto Bundle next turn with the Shadow Sneak plus a knockoff. Or sorry, Shadow Sneak plus Sucker Punch. Okay, they're gonna switch in King Gambit here. Smart switch. This is why I brought Scizor in the back though. Scizor can now bullet punch into Iron Hands in close combat into King Gambit. Freeze dry into the Zorark slot. The disguise is now broken. Or illusion is broken. And knock off into bundle. Getting rid of focus ash. Cool. Pretty good turn, all things considered. I do want to like sucker punch and shadow sneak right now into iron bundle. Bundle might protect here. We'll see. I don't mind playing a little bit aggressive here though. Because I don't even mind losing one Pokemon. Because it would give me a free switch into scissor. I think the main question I have right now is what Terra is King Gambit? If you're flying Terra, then I can Thunderbolt you with the Sandy Shocks. Could also be Fairy Terra, but then I can Flash Cannon you. Oh! Uh, that is not what I expected to Terra. But I feel like you're only doing that if you're playing offensively here, right? <laughs> oh, I think this is game over. Yep, bundle survives, but that's why I doubled up onto that slot. Nice. I wasn't even trying to make like a advanced prediction like that. I was just thinking, well, bundle's kind of annoying for what I have in the back, and I have low kick on the Zorak as well as close combat on the Scizor. Water Terra there, really surprising, but that's one thing that this team does really well, right? The amount of priority you have between Mimikyu, Zorak, and Scizor is just absolutely nasty. And so. Your opponents will often think they can outspeed you, and then you just launch all these priority attacks into them and completely catch them off guard. So Mimikyu comes out for my opponent. Well, I've got low kick here. They're not going to expect that either. So I'm down to just low kick and then shadow sneak into Mimikyu. At this point, like I think Scizor should actually close out this game for us because it has a super effective bullet punch into Mimikyu, and it can close combat into the King Gambit slot. Okay, Mimikyu's disguise is broken now. Nice. No priority from there. And low kick just one shots King Gambit. So even if they set up Trick Room, I think Scizor should secure up this win for us. They just end up play roughing. Totally fine. Okay. And so I will bring out Scizor first. Iron Hands can't click the fake out into the Mimikyu slot. Yeah, I think going for Fire Terra here is fine because it covers for will o -Wisp from Mimikyu and just Bullet Punch Mimikyu. Shadow Sneak into Iron Hands. If Iron Hands has Protect, I guess that's the worst case scenario. They Protect, Mimikyu could knock out my Mimikyu. 
but I'd still get a bullet punch onto theirs, and I don't know how bulky their Mimikyu is, so, yeah. I thought the Water Terra was a little bit ambitious from their end. I thought King Gambit was probably the safer Terra option, but I'm also happy because in this matchup, I think Trick Room would have been pretty scary, and they didn't actually get Trick Room up. They kind of opted for a slightly faster mode with their Iron Bundle, but I came in trying to prepare against Ferrigaraf and Mimikyu. And yeah, the beauty of having so much priority on this team really comes out on that one turn against Bundle. And you can see if we didn't double up onto a Bundle, would have survived and gotten a huge attack off potentially, right? Mainly curious what it was going for there with the Water Terra, like whether it was just a Hydro Pump or another move. They got into Scizor, that's fine. Oh, they actually outspeed us here with Shadow Sneak, but end up surviving. Cool. Yeah, like, even if they got the knockout there, the next turn I just bring out... Okay, actually, Iron Hand survives the Shadow Sneak. That's pretty impressive. So, actually, this is basically the scenario that would have happened if they got the knockout. I was going to say, I just bring out the Sandy Shocks, and I just bullet punch the Mimikyu slot Earth Power into Iron Hands. The main question I have is whether or not Mimikyu could survive a bullet punch here. Honestly, they might be able to. And then whether or not Iron Hands had Protect. That was my other question. And the Fire Terror there was just a cover for a potential Will-O-Wisp option. Oh, actually, Faint is better here to guarantee the knockout onto Hands. Um, Yeah, I don't want to actually throw the game away. So, it's Faint and Earth Power. Uh... Thunderbolt's, I guess, better because it could get pair into full pair. They end up forfeiting. But with Faint, there was essentially a guaranteed knockout onto Iron Hands, and then I get a guaranteed Thunderbolt or Earth Power into the Mimikyu slot. Even if Mimikyu crits to get a knockout onto one of the two Pokemon, the other one should just get the knockout the subsequent turn. So, yeah. Zorark, once again, putting in a lot of work for us. And in this one, it was mainly, you know, the ability to just deal a lot of uh, surprise damage between knockoff as well as the uh, sucker punch and then of course Mimikyu was really nice here the life or play rough into iron hands just put my opponent i think into a really tough spot immediately okay talon flame tusk bundle and the flutter main but then you have mousehold plus annihilate as the last two so like this team has so much priority it's super super anti um, Flutter main. I think Tusk scares me a little bit. Uh, I like leading Zorark. Although, how do I beat... Mousehold and Ilape here? I guess it'd be Mimikyu play rough. I like this lead. I mean, I can sucker punch Shadow Sneak. I, like... This leash is often nice because of Focus Ash and Disguise. If I were them, I honestly wouldn't even bother bringing out the Flutter main. I want Sandy Shocks here. Gorgonacle once again feels too passive. So it's between Baxcalibur and Scizor. I think Bax might be a little bit more consistent here, but Scizor is just one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, and I think it could work in this matchup, so I'm going to bring Scizor instead. Sorry, Baxcalibur. This, this matchup's pretty scary, though, I think. Um, especially if they just have, like, a good timely protect here and there. Uh, their team just has so much pure offense right from turn one. It is Mousehold and Eyelid. Yeah, I'm, like, not sure we actually have super good answers into this. So, like, Zorark is interesting here, at least. I wonder if they just go for beat up. Because right now, they're probably thinking I'm Scizor instead of Zorark. Like, I kind of want to go for knockoff as well as play rough immediately. Okay, they go just for beat up. That's what I want to see. I don't know. With friend guard, though, they probably survived this decently well. I don't know. Like, we'll see if it's like the max attack, max speed variant. It's pretty good damage from knockoff. And I'm faster with Mimikyu, and we just get the knockout. <laughs> Ooh. Let's go. That's one of the most satisfying turn ones I could have had. This is what Zora can do, ladies and gentlemen. 
So they were probably expecting, like, saying, okay, well, you have Scizor out. Scizor's not really that scary. I'm just going to double up onto you. But it's not the case. I've got Scizor and Sandy Shocks in the back. Even though I have this lead, this game is still far from over, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. I generally like protecting here to conserve Focus Sash. And then play rough into the Tusk slot. <laughs> oh, we got a turn one forfeit. Yeah, I mean, the game wasn't over, but I can understand how demoralizing a turn one like that can be. But I, I think you can see, right? Zorak just has given us such a huge advantage because our opponents, like, play expecting a very specific lead. And the Zorark is just a complete bluff and catches our opponents completely off guard. And so even though that was only a one turn game, I'm glad to actually highlight it because this is the power of Zorark and what it can do. Because the thing is, it's often disguising as something uh, or the illusion is something that's like slower than it, right? So our opponents will play in a way expecting it, the Pokemon to be slower, essentially. And so, like, there, they were thinking, I can just probably Rage Fist, or sorry, beat up into Rage Fist into the Scizor slot. Scizor should be slower than me. And if I didn't get that at first chip damage off with knockoff, Play Rough probably wouldn't have gotten the knockout. So they're probably thinking, well, I've got Friend Guard here. I can just knock out a Pokemon immediately. But we completely turn the tides and just have a faster Zorark. Ooh, rank 10. Okay, let's see what we can do with Zorark. This looks like the rank number one team that I had featured on the channel recently, but I don't know if it's the exact team. Um, that one had Booster Energy on Iron Moth. It was Focus Ash Glamora, uh, which was really powerful. I think the Pokemon and the genders are actually in the same order, so I believe it is just that team. So one thing I realized I actually haven't talked about very much, by the way, is in team preview for all the other games, I didn't talk about like what I wanted Zoark to intentionally disguise as, and so um, I've kind of just been selecting it right? But I think I can be a little bit more intentional uh, in terms of, yeah, figuring out an interesting path where I'm specifically disguising as something to catch my opponent off guard. I mean, I was kind of doing that through games one and three, but I didn't really talk about it in the team preview phase. So it's Dragon Dondozo here. We have Curse Mimikyu, which I think is really good into it. Um, what do I want to disguise as in this one? Maybe Gargan... I don't want to bring Garganackle, though, is the thing. I like Zoroark. And Mimikyu. And in the back, I want Sandy Shocks. Actually, I think I will disguise this Garganackle. I kind of changed my mind last second there. I think Vax Calibur is also acceptable in this one, but I don't know. Like, Garganackle is actually kind of interesting as a potential terror option into their team. And I think by disguising as Garganackle, they might think I'm going to play a little bit passive, right? And for example, attack with Fluttermane or Iron Moth. Yes, this is what I want to see. So the main question here is who protects, right? Because I could, for example, knock off Shadow Sneak, double up into Glamora. I personally want to Sucker Punch this and Shadow Sneak it. They could protect here, given that I have Mimikyu out. And then, like, attack with Glamora. I'm still down to go for it. Yeah, good protect. Nicely done. Now I'm going to have to reveal that I am also uh, not actually a Garganackle. It's fine, though, because I think what this does is essentially force the um, Fluttermane to switch out this next turn. Yeah, and the Earth Power to Mimikyu. I wonder how much like Shadow Claw plus Knockoff would have done into Glamour and whether or not it was enough for a KO. I would think so, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, now we'd expect this to switch out, right? So I'm down to go for a knockoff onto the Flutter main slot. And actually just... Shadow Claw into Glamora. 
Oh, they stayed in. Wow. Okay, I gotta give them kudos for that. Because I thought, like, they would really have to respect another Sucker Punch plus Shadow Sneak. I don't even think... I'm not sure Fairy Terra would... Well... No, the Flutterman on that team is a little bit more defensive, so I actually probably would have saved them, yeah. Really nice play. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely just been hard outplayed both turn 1 and turn 2. But the Fairy Terra, you know, helps uh, them probably feel a little bit more confident with that play, so that was really cool. Okay, so... Life Orb... Yeah, I don't know. Feel like Shadows? No, it's what? 48 HP, 52 defense EVs. Yeah, I'm really not sure that would have gotten the knockout. Anyway, this is fine because now I get my booster energy Sandy Shocks out. Really good damage from Shadow Claw. But Toxic Debris here is really scary. Okay, I'm going to Sandy Shocks. Now my question is whether or not a Life Orb Shadow Sneak from Mimikyu KOs the Flutter main. It is a slightly more defensive Flutter main. I still think it might get the KO though, so like I want to just Earth Power here and just Shadow Sneak. But this is the thing, I don't really know my defensive Flutter main damage calc super well, and... Okay, yeah, Spiky Shield comes out. Life Orb Shadow Sneak. <laughs> That's why you run defensive Flutter main, it actually hangs on with what literally looks like 1 HP. I knew it was defensive as well, so that's kind of on me for, you know, not securing the knockout. But... I really didn't want Glamora to just get a free attack off in that position, like a free Earth Power. Because if I double up onto Fluttermane, kind of like how I did on turn 1, it would be pretty rough, but... My opponents very consistently outplayed me in this game. Yeah, this is looking pretty lost at this point, but I can still try. Maybe hope for them to Earth Power into Garganackle. Okay, if I protect here and actually sulk here into this, I think there's still a chance. Especially if they end up trying to double up into Sandy Shocks. Okay, yep, there's the first target. Nah, they just split their damage, though. Okay. So given that, then, I could have gotten a double knockout this turn. The other thing is, I don't know what they have in the back. I was expecting Dondozo Tatsugiri. Could I have won against that? I mean, I could still win against it here. It's not over. But yeah, Earth Power actually didn't really do that much to Garganackle. This was a super winnable matchup, especially knowing, like having played my opponent's team before, but I, they just played a lot better than I did. Like, I was I was trying to, you know, show off the fun combo of Shadow Sneak and Sucker Punch, but it did not work out super well for me. I actually bring out Tatsugiri. Interesting. Well, I know you're Scarf Tatsugiri. You could Grass Terra here defensively. I think I should go for the knockout onto Tatsugiri this turn, ideally. They should click Draco Meteor, in my opinion. <sighs> like, I honestly want to go Grass, Terra, Thunderbolt, and Protect. But I think if they just Draco into the Sandy Shock slot, I'm probably done for. But I'm hoping here they end up, I don't know, going Draco into Garganackle and then, like, uh, Sludge, sorry, Earth Power into Sandy Shocks. Okay, so there's Thunderbolt. Does over half. 
Ah, they did Draco into us, though. Okay. Nice to done. I hang on with one, but that's not enough. Mimikyu needed to survive earlier, I think, to give me a shot. They actually double up onto Sandy Shocks. Nicely played. Yeah. It was, it was going to be tough to come back from this after the early game, but this is a great example of a game where I think I had all the tools to win. I just didn't execute it nearly as well as I could have. Um... Because I think the Pokemon selection was totally fine. Yeah, I think, like, if I just go, like, knockoff and Shadow Claw turn one into the Glamora slot, we already put my opponent in a really tricky position. And I knew it was bulky Flutter main, but I still, you know, figured Shadow Seek would get the knockout. But that's a good damage cock to know, right? Like, and I, this game highlights just how much of a difference having, like, 148 HP EVs and 52 defense EVs uh, can make uh, on a team like that. So that's why you might want to consider using bulky Flutter main instead of just max special attack, max speed. So uh, if you want to see me try out the team that my opponent just used, I'll link a video that I played with it down in the description below. But it's just one of the most consistent, best uh, teams that, that exist in Series 2 so far. Uh, and the original creator got it to rank number one on the ladder. So really well executed by my opponent. I thought they played that super well and they should be proud of their play. Okay, Dragapult, Grimmsnarl, Dragonite, Iron Moth, Golden Go, and Meow Scarada. I haven't seen a Dragapult in a minute. Hmm. So this works like a little tempting here. I don't know. I think the priority from the other mons are still stronger though. I think I want to go with the these four so like Zorark I keep leading Zorark Mimikyu but it's just really effective honestly Zorark Mimikyu what do I want to mm, disguise myself as Sandy Shocks doesn't look that good into their team so I'm actually gonna pick Sandy Shocks here because I think if I disguise as Baxcalibur it actually draws more attention to the Zorark slot I guess, though, if I lead Sandy Shocks and they lead, or I, it look like I'm leading Sandy Shocks and they lead Golden Go, that's kind of awkward for me. Because then the Golden Go is actually pressured pretty hard. Uh, Mimikyu looks really good into their team. Super effective damage into five of the six Mons, right? Dragapult, Golden Go, Grimmsnarl, Meowskarada, Dragonite. So that looks really powerful to me. Grimmsnarl and Dragapult. Okay, I don't mind that. <sighs> the thing is, like, I don't know what kind of Dragapult set this is. Because one tempting play is to just Sucker Punch Shadow Sneak it. But maybe Dragapult just straight up respects Mimikyu here and they, like, switch out or protect on turn one. I don't mind knock off in a Dragapult and play rough here. I'm going to split my damage so I don't commit into attacking into something. I end up just light screening though, so Sucker Punch Shadow Sneak would have worked here. It's Will O Wisp. And I was lucky enough to get a dodge there. Leftovers. Leftovers, interesting. Okay. What's also interesting is that they went for the Reflect rather than the light screen. So I can actually just. Shadow Sneak now to finish off. I mean, do I care about denying Reflect? I do think it'd be nice. We got lucky with that burn, although I think even if the burn had happened, I'd probably just let Reflect go up and then get a double knockout. But now I'm thinking, well, since you didn't effectively actually get the burn successfully... Oh, also, Sucker Punch would have failed. Yeah, because they went for Willow. So that play actually wouldn't have worked last turn anyway. Yeah, I'm going to just knock off into Dragapult and then Shadow Sneak into Grimmsnarl. Leftovers Willow is Dragapult, though. Not a set that you see that frequently. And it was bulky enough to actually survive a super effective knockoff, which in itself is also pretty impressive. So I imagine Willow is begin here. Oh, they actually go for Thunder Wave. Okay. I don't mind that as much, honestly. Focus Sash is still intact now. And we get Knock Off. Cool. Alright, quick start to the battle. They got Light Screen up, and it'll probably be up for the remainder of the battle. Assuming they're Light Clay. But, yeah, I mean, Mimikyu's putting in a lot of work right now. So Golden Go comes out, which makes some ton of sense. Is that Dragonite? Yeah. Is 
So I'd like to click knock off here into Golden Go. I think I actually want to Shadow Sneak into Dragonite because I have Baxcalibur and the Sandy Shocks in the back. Only one of these can Terra, right? So if you end up terroring the Golden Go, well then I can just Ice Shard Dragonite. Shadow Sneak here is to basically ensure... I guess it could be normal Terra Dragonite here, but yeah, they're going to Terra Golden Go, which makes sense. And it's Water Terra Golden Go. This is something that I think is definitely picking up in usage. I've seen things like Nasty Plot Recover Covert Cloak. Also just seeing Choice Specs with Water Terra. Um, but basically the logic here is Shadow Seek now breaks multi-skill and I can just Ice Shard with Baxcalibur. It's Rocky Helmet. Ooh, that's cool. They went for Thunder Wave onto the Mimikyu slot. Okay. And then Nasty Plot with Golden Go. Uh, I've definitely been pretty lucky with the dodges this game. Yeah, there's Covert Cloak. This might be Recover as well then. Curious if that's actually the case. I'm honestly down to click Curse right now. Uh, I'll knock off into Dragonite here. I could see it Roosting. And I'm down to Curse into Dragonite. Okay. Yep, they go for Thunder Wave. That's fine. It's probably a Recover from Golden Go, but... Nope, they just click Make It Rain. Okay, I think that actually just secures up the game for me then, I would think. Oh no, it doesn't, because Mimikyu doesn't faint. Oh, that's actually pretty awkward. <laughs> yeah, because I still have my... No, 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 with Disguise broken, it I do faint, right? Yeah, Illusion, and then Disguise... I've just never seen Disguise being broken at this point, where I actually faint from there. That's so interesting. Um, okay, no more Rocky Helmet for you. And now I get a double free switch in, and I can just actually Thunderbolt plus Ice Shard for a double KO. And there's Curse. So I'm glad I actually got to use Curse in this one. Curse is mainly really valuable into Dondozo Tatsugiri, which... It went up against in that previous game, but my opponent didn't even bring out their four Pokemon. I would think it was Dondozo, but that may have just been another one in the back. Um, but Curse is a really interesting move. I had the chance to go for it, I think, in one of the earlier games today. But yeah, now I can just Ice Shard Thunderbolt. That should be game over. Let's just actually assume Golden Go is like super bulky, though. Since Light Screen is technically up. Um... Thunderbolt into Golden Go, and we can just fire Terra here to make sure I don't like toss the match and Ice Shard in a Dragonite. Yeah, they end up forfeiting, but I just wanted to, I don't know, if they're like max HP, max special defense Golden Go, I could see myself potentially throwing the game if I like didn't Terra with Baxcalibur there and let them just make it rain, pick up a double knockout there. Whereas with my play there, Thunderbolt, even if it doesn't knock you out, should put you in very, very low HP enough where I would think an Ice Shard from the Baxcalibur just finished it off. So, yeah, even though it looked like the game was basically won there, just wanted to cover for the option of it being, like, super bulky. I don't I don't know if Golden Go can even take a Thunderbolt, given that it was Water Terror from that range, but Light Screen was still up, so I wanted to show some respect for that. So, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. I had so much fun with this team, and I think Zorark is a very legitimate Pokemon. It's something that I've always wanted to see people utilize, and I hope that this episode has uh, opened some of your eyes to its potential in this format. So, yeah. Thanks so much, as always, for watching. If you enjoy, would really appreciate if you consider leaving a like in the video, and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.